Hey you guys, so today we're going to be talking about slope and we're actually going to be looking at pages 33 and 34. Let me write that on here. Now this is just an information page right now that I wanted to share with you. But since we're talking about slope, I wanted to kind of introduce what that is. So in a linear relationship, meaning a relationship that will form a straight line on a graph, the vertical change, the vertical is up and down, so the vertical change per unit of horizontal change, which is side to side, is always the same. This ratio is called the slope of the function. The constant rate of change or unit rate is the same as the slope of the related linear relationship. Basically what's that, what that is saying is if it's creating a a proportional relationship, so remember when we're looking at a graph it needs to go through zero um, to be proportional. Um, then we can use unit rate, but if it doesn't go through zero, then we need to use a different slope function. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. The slope tells how steep the line is. The vertical change is sometimes called the rise, while the horizontal change is called the run. So you can say that slope equals the rise over run. This is huge. You will hear that a lot during your career as a math student. Um, slope equals rise over run. So think of rise as like the sun rising. That means the number that, how far it goes up, goes on the top. And then run, think of like you would rather run on a flat surface than going up a hill. So run is the side to side value. And what that means is you will find two points on a graph. If you're given a graph, you'll find two points. And you want to find two points right in a corner. Um, notice that that one ends up right on one one. And then you want another point on the graph. And it can be any two points on the, on the line. You just want to make sure that they are in the corner. So notice there's another one up here that's right in a corner. You could use, one, you could use that one too. But what you're going to do is see how far it is up from one dot to the next dot. So that's called the rise. So we're going to say that goes up one, two, three. So our rise is three. And remember, rise goes on the top, rise over run. And then for run, it goes in or side to side, one, two. So our slope equals three over two. OK, let's apply this to our assignment today. So this is page 33, and we're going to do number two. Number two says, the line represents the length and height of a skateboard ramp. Find the slope of the ramp. So we are going to just pick any two points on a corner. I'm just going to pick this point here. And it looks like these are all on corners, so we can pick any of them. <clears throat> and then we're going to calculate the rise over the run. Now it looks like it just goes up one, but notice over here, it's actually going up by two. Two to four is going up two spaces. So our rise is two, so you've gotta look at the graph closely. And then our run is going from eight to 16, if you notice down here. So it's going over eight. And then we're gonna plug that into our calculator and simplify that. So it is one fourth is the slope. So let's jump over to page 34 and try one of those. Let's look at number two. So number two, um, the instructions say to graph the data, then find the slope and explain what the slope represents. So for number two, the temperature is 70 and the number of people on the beach is 24. But if the temperature is 78, the number of people is 40. If it's 86, there are 56 people on the beach, and if it's 94, there are 72 people on the beach. So you can see the trend that the more people on the beach, or sorry, the higher the temperature, then the more people there will be on the beach. So we're gonna go ahead and graph these points. So 70 and 24 is gonna be about, whoops, it's a little high, but about there. And then 40, oh sorry, 78 temperature will give us 40. And then 86 will give us 56 people. And 94 will give us 72 people. So when I look at this graph, 
I want to find two perfect points, but I don't really see those. So I'm going to show you one other way to find the slope. Um, the other way that we can find the slope is just using these values up here in the table. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a y, which is the number of people. So usually x is on the top and y is on the bottom in these sorts of tables. So we're going to take the y values and we're going to subtract them. So 40 minus 24 is 16. So that is our top number. And then we're going to subtract 78 minus 70. So notice that I went this way when I subtracted. 78 minus 70 is 8. And I can simplify that to 2. Um, let me just explain what, what I did here. This formula for slope is called the change in y, meaning subtract two of the y points, and over the change in x, meaning subtract two of the x points. So that's what I did, and I really could have picked any of those points as long as I stayed consistent. So let's say I picked 72 and 56 for my y value, then I would definitely want to pick 94 and 86 for my x value because those are the matching pairs. Um, so that's how we find it that way if you can't tell from a graph. And then we need to say what the slope represents. So this means that for every, so what this means, I'm actually going to write this as 2 over 1. Remember that 2 represents the y value and y is number of people on the beach and one represents x, which is the temperature. So what this means is for every, degree raised, right, for every one degree, two more people come to the beach. And we could have written that differently, like two more people come to the beach for every for every degree it is raised or something like that. Okay, I hope that is helpful. So you have two ways to find slope. You can do the rise or over run, or you can do this change in y, where you subtract two y points and over the change in x. Thanks guys, I hope you have a great day.